Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we will be discussing the physiological changes in laparoscopic surgery. Many surgeries that were previously done via laparotomy can be done laparoscopically. For example, cholecystectomy, hernia repair, appendicectomy, etc. Benefits of laparoscopy over laparotomy includes reduced tissue trauma, wound size, post-op pain, post-op ileus, time to mobilization, and hospital stay, and improved post-op respiratory function and cosmetic results. Surgical requirements of pneumoperitoneum formation includes the formation of pneumoperitoneum by insufflation of carbon dioxide or other gases into the peritoneal cavity. This separates the abdominal wall from the viscera. Carbon dioxide is usually used and it is insufflated at a rate of 4 to 6 liters per minute to achieve a pressure of 10 to 20 millimeters mercury. The normal intra-abdominal pressure is 0 to 7 millimeters mercury. Pneumoperitoneum can be maintained by a constant gas flow of 200 to 400 ml per minute due to leakage from surgical pots. Carbon dioxide is selected as the gas of choice because it is non-combustible, allowing the use of diatomy and lasers, it is colorless, non-toxic, and highly soluble. Non-absorbable gases have higher risk of causing issues like pneumothorax and gas embolism. The effects of gas insufflation and pneumoperitoneum. The cardiovascular effects includes increased blood pressure. Factors causing increased blood pressure are initial autotransfusion of a few hundred mils of blood from the sprunging circulation increases the immediate circulating volume. Gas insufflation may trigger a sympathetic response leading to hypertension and tachycardia. Systemic vascular resistance increases as a result of pneumoperitoneum compressing peripheral vessels, catecholamine and vasopressin release, and activation of renin angiotensin system. This may offset any drop in cardiac output secondary to reduce venous return but at the expense of increasing myocardial work. Factors causing decreases in blood pressure includes decreases in venous return secondary to raised intra-abdominal pressure compressing the inferior vena cava. Reverse trenolambic position risks marked venous pooling and effective hypovolemia. Stretching of the peritoneum may cause vagal stimulation resulting in sinus bradycardia, nodal rhythm, and occasionally a systole. Prepare vagolytics to counteract this problem. Respiratory effects of laparoscopy includes reduction of FRC due to splinting of the diaphragm, increased airway resistance due to raised abdominal pressure, reduced pulmonary compliance due to raised abdominal pressure as well, these changes are less marked in the head up position. Oxygen desaturation may be due to shunting or gas leaks such as pneumothorax. Facial and upper airway edema may occur, especially in extreme and prolonged trendelenburg position. Hypercapnia can occur due to absorption of carbon dioxide. Prolonged procedure may need a carbon dioxide break. Central nervous system effects. Raised intracranial pressure may be secondary to increases in intra-abdominal and venous pressure. Prolonged head down tilt may result in hydrostatic cerebral edema. Gastrointestinal and renal effects includes the abdominal compartment syndrome, which is the sustained intra-abdominal pressure of greater than 20 mmHg. Pressures may already be high in the morbidly obese patient in whom they can be around 14 mm mercury. Mesenteric and mucosal, mucosal blood flow can be reduced by almost half in abdominal compartment syndrome. Renal vascular resistance is increased and glomerular filtration rate and urine output may decrease. There may be regurgitation of gastric contents. Tracheal intubation is favored by most anesthetists compared to LMA. Compartment syndromes may occur secondary to prolonged lithotomy in the trenolemic position. This predisposes the patient to lower limb compartment syndrome by immobility, compression, and venous congestion due to reduced femoral venous return caused by the position and by increase in intra-abdominal pressure. 
Complications of laparoscopic surgery includes surgical damage by trochas, such as damage to organs, such as the spleen, bladder, liver, bowel, or stomach. Damage to blood vessels can also occur and results in hemorrhage. Extraperitoneal gas insufflation may occur through misplaced troca or insufficient needle and anatomical defect such as between the pleura and peritoneum or gas under pressure within the abdomen dissecting through the tissue planes and this may result in subcutaneous emphysema, pneumomediastinum, pneumopericardium and pneumothorax. Suggestive signs of pneumothorax include a rapidly raising, rising ETCO2, rising airway pressures and falling oxygen saturations. The treatment is to evacuate the carbon dioxide from the abdomen, neither decompression or chest tube drainage. Vagal stimulation during stretch of pneumoperitoneum may lead to bradycardia or asystole. Rapidly deflate abdomen and administer vagolytics if this happens. Venous gas embolism may occur. Immediate discontinuation of insufflation should be followed by generic resuscitation. Carbon dioxide embolism is less dangerous than air and other gases as it is highly soluble. This may rarely occur when gas is insufflated directly into a blood vessel. Signs of significant gas embolism includes reduced ETCO2, desaturation, arrhythmias, myocardial ischemia, hypotension, and elevated CVP. Shock may occur due to CVS depression. Treat with fluids, vasoconstrictors, and inotropes. These are my references. Thank you.